Hello and welcome. Now, our top focus is on Kenya, one of the largest and strongest economies in East and Central Africa. It has stepped up its efforts to join BRICS, a group of the world's emerging economies. Kenyan President William Ruto has approached China to gain support for the BRICS membership. Li Shi, a top Chinese official, concluded an official visit to Kenya on Tuesday. And during the bilateral talks in Nairobi, President Ruto requested China's backing for Kenya's bid to join BRICS. Originally founded as BRIC, the group expanded to become BRICS in 2010 with South Africa's entry. The original members include Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. However, the group expanded this year to join more members. The new BRICS members include Iran, the UAE and also the African nations of Ethiopia and Egypt. Saudi Arabia has accepted the invitation but is yet to officially join the bloc. The group was established to bring together the world's most important developing countries with an aim to challenge the political and economic power of the West. Now, the expanded BRICS has a combined population of about 3.5 billion, or 45 percent, of the world's inhabitants. Combined members' economies are worth more than $28.5 trillion, which is about 28 percent of the global economy. With Iran, Saudi Arabia and the UAE as members, BRICS countries produce about 44% of the world's crude oil. During this year's BRICS summit in the Russian city of Kazan, the members pledged to add 13 new partners, which include three more African nations, Algeria, Uganda and Nigeria. Russian President Putin had earlier said that around 34 nations have expressed interest to join the bloc. As more countries are considering joining BRICS, experts in Kenya have been urging the Ruto government to follow suit for economic and trade benefits. They say the BRICS members can enable the East African nation to create better markets for its agricultural products. Experts also say that the use of local currencies should be increased to promote intra-Africa trade. And there needs to be a reduction in dependency on the U.S. dollar. African nations are seeking alternatives to reduce dependency on lenders, like the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. For years, multilateral lenders have had bad reputations in African countries for providing loans based on stringent conditions, which have disproportionately affected the poor. Now, Kenya, which is struggling under a massive $82 billion debt, has also criticized international lenders for unusually high interest rates. In order to meet the IMF's policy reform demands for a lending program, President Ruto proposed new tax hikes this year, which were later scrapped. After they met a heavy public criticism and outrage, massive anti-tax protests broke out in the country which soon turned into a wider campaign against Ruto. Apart from financial benefits, some also point out the more inclusivity and political neutrality that BRICS offers. Moreover, it can provide Kenya a platform for greater influence on the global stage. To discuss further on the prospects of Kenya joining BRICS, we are being joined by Patrick Bond. He is a political economist who is joining us from Johannesburg, South Africa. Hello to you, Patrick. Uh, it was nice to be back with you. Thanks. Great to have you. Now, what strategic advantages does Kenya hope to gain by joining the BRICS group? And how might this impact its economic and diplomatic position, both regionally and globally? Well, as you remember, the Kazan summit uh, about three weeks ago in Russia had um, quite a few prospective uh, BRICS members, amongst which was not Kenya. But Uganda was admitted as a partner, along with Algeria and Nigeria, uh, two very oil-rich uh, countries. And um, uh, Uganda will soon become an oil-rich country with uh, Chinese uh, National Overseas Oil Corporation and Total exporting uh, once they get their pipeline in place. Um, the other two being Ethiopia and Egypt. Now, uh, South Africa normally would be the sort of arbiter, 
uh, of who joins from Africa, the way Russia did with uh, uh, nearly a half a dozen countries from its region, and China from uh, Southeast Asia, four major countries, uh, and then from uh, Latin America, Brazil, uh, chose uh, two smaller but, but left-wing countries, Bolivia and Cuba. Now, the dilemma is that, uh, and India as well as a major force, of course, but the, the dilemma is what do you really get out of it? You get potential access to the BRICS New Development Bank, and they do have slightly lower interest rates. However, Ethiopia, having defaulted just before it joined BRICS earlier this year, wouldn't be a, a logical member. Egypt already is. And these, by the way, partnerships aren't mm. really full memberships. I think we'll only learn in uh, Brazil uh, next year when Lula hosts the BRICS, what partnership means and whether they're going to add new partners and what is the scaling up from being a partner to a member. So it's a bit unclear. I think it's prestige and it's a balancing act so that the West knows, well, we can't really count entirely on uh, Kenya to sure. be our friend unless sure. we offer more benefits. Right. And how significant is China's role in determining Kenya's potential accession to BRICS? And what are the key interests or conditions that China might have in exchange for its support? Well, I would guess that the Chinese are thinking they've got a large outstanding loan on their major Mombasa Nairobi rail line that still is contested. The, the uprising that you had clips of, especially Gen Z, the youth saying, well, we want a debt audit. Yeah. We think there might have been some corruption in that loan. It was uh, uh, a deal that uh, you know, maybe didn't entirely make sense in the terms, uh, you know, double the cost is what some would say because of uh, all of the padding on that huge uh, rail line, about 10% uh, of Kenya's debt right there. So I suspect that the uh, Beijing logic is, mm -hmm. well, if we can entice the leaders of uh, Kenya in, and don't forget just the day before, the uprising of Gen Z in, uh, it was June 25th this year. The day before, Joe Biden, yes. the US president, had offered uh, uh, William Ruto, the president, the uh, Kenya non-NATO uh, major ally status. That's a very important role that even South Africa doesn't have as sort of a, an ally of, of Washington. And I think, again, it's that, that balancing act to, to have a tug of war. That's uh, relatively unique in Africa because there mm. are too many, let's say, um, one-sided relationships, and I think this this is an interesting balancing. Right. And could Kenya's alignment with BRICS, as you've touched on now, affect these existing relationships with the Western countries, particularly uh, the U.S., in terms of trade and development aid? And how might this shift influence in economic policies? Well, you know, you've you've announced uh, Donald Trump, I think, uh, as as the incoming president in January in the United States, and he'll be determining a, a great deal of those AGOA, Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, trade relations with countries he really has very little regard for. He may give Kenya a break. It's not that important a relationship uh, compared, say, to South Africa or Angola or Lesotho. But for Kenya, the potential there is that you could talk to Trump and say, well, um, like a very good relationship with uh, with uh, Ruto, that uh, that the U.S. should keep a big presence. On the other hand, with Trump, you just never know what you're going to get, and his uh, disdain for anything, uh, you know, African has been made very clear, and his, uh, including European uh, support, the. Um, the economic partnership agreements, I think, will be uh, tested. This is a period we're entering of what uh, ideologically can be called paleoconservatism, a reactionary, let me call it, uh, isolationist yeah. approach. And Europeans are also subject to those very pressures as their right wing also rises. Kenya's uh, obviously trying to play it uh, in different ways and probably continue to find ways to keep the populace down while these elites do these deals. I'm not sure it's going to, uh, right. the, you know, the, the center can hold. Right. Patrick, thank you very much for being with us on the show. As always, great to speak with you. Thank you. But it's a completely different story on the betting market. Elon Musk, the tech visionary who is backing Donald Trump. In New York, the Dow Jones and Nasdaq dropped over 3%. Joining Putin in flexing muscle is his dear friend Xi Jinping. The 
U.S. law calls for a presidential poll to be held on the Tuesday. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. I like that.